students of standard 9th welcome to the english class this is your puja teacher and today we begin with the third unit of your english text 3.1 the poem silver composed by sir walter de lamar In the poem Silver, the poet Walter de Lamar describes the beauty of a moonlight. He talks about the moon as if it is a woman walking slowly and quietly in the night. The poet describes the impact that the silver light of the moon has on every objects and creatures existing. within the darkened night about the poet walter john de lamar was an english poet story writer and a novelist he is probably best remembered of his works for the poems especially for the children The poet chose to compare the moon to silver instead of a white moon to maintain positive image. Now students I read the poem for you. In your textbook you have this page of warming up activities. Yes by the end of this session we'll complete this warming up activity. And now the poem on your screen silver slowly silently now the moon walks the night in her silver shoon this way and that she peers and sees silver fruit upon silver trees one by one the casements catch her beams beneath the silvery thatch couched in his kennel like a dog i repeat couched in his kennel like a log with paws of silver slips the dog from their shadowy coat the white breast pip of doves in silver feather slip a harvest mouse goes scampering by with silver claws and silver eye and moveless fish in the water gleam by silver reeds in a silver stream a very beautiful poem ended by sir walter de lamar students the poet begins on a note that during daylight hours sunlight reveals the creatures and things of the earth in its golden light that is sunlight that reveals many varied colors while during the night time hours moonlight offers a very different experience of seeing everything through the lens of silver in the poem as the moon has been personified as a woman taking her time choosing to look at everything on the earth while she has the chance so here the couplet the first couplet on your screen slowly silently now the moon slowly silently now the moon walks the night in her silver shoon students please take note a couplet is a pair of successive lines of verse which are usually of the same length and rhyme so students this first 
couplet explains that yes, Walter the Lamar's silver simply introduces the moon which is moving slowly and silently across the sky. The poet refers the moon as she, as the moon is a woman and describes how she is walking through the night wearing silver shoon. The British dialect that uses shoon for shoes effects a useful rhyme with moon. So here the moon is personified as a woman to imply how graceful its movement is. And now second couplet on your screen. This way and that she peers and sees silver fruit upon the silver trees. Students, please take note. This couplet indicates that the moon is observing. Observing what? In the second couplet, the poet describes the moon playfully peering from her place in the sky. This metamorphic moon woman peers and sees anyone walking the silver sprayed landscape at night might encounter might encounter that might meet certain objects being bathed and transformed by moonlight. Here the moon sees the trees with fruits that catches her eye specially. The silver fruits upon silver trees. Silver is used to describe almost every sight seen by the moon. It is her own shining which cast the distant upon the ground. She means here the moon is drawn in by the beauty of her own life force which first shows itself on fruit trees. This represents life and bounty. Important and joyful element of the world. Students, this could be a metaphor for the constellation of stars in the sky. Third couplet. One by one the casement catch her beams beneath the silvery thatch. In the third couplet, the poet describes how the silver light of the moon shines upon the windows, that is casements, of the houses below and how the moonlight makes the roof of the houses also appear silver. Yes, students, the thatched roofs are flowing with silver. This silver enhances the beauty of the nighttime landscapes. It merely proclaims that everything God has created is beautiful. If one can only open one's eye to see that beauty. Here we take a start with the fourth couplet. Couched in his kennel like a log with paws of silver slips the dog. Students, in these lines, 
the speaker describes a dog sleeping like a log in its kennel kennel that is dog house it paws also appears to be silver because of the light of the moon therefore the speaker has observed that in her dog houses these dogs are all silvered as they slip like a log happy silvered dogs sleep peacefully in complete harmony outside in full view of any observer who might be taking a walk in the moonlight so students this line also indicates that it is metaphors including paws of silver yes hints pure and simple and uninterrupted sleep of the dog as you could see in the picture that the dog is sleeping in complete harmony in the silver moonlight fifth couplet from their shadowy coat the white breast pip of doves in silver feathered slip yes students here poet describes the nature the nature offers many scenes for observation the speaker means the poet walter the lamar then notes that even the doves can be seen in the silver of the moonlight the breast of the doves are peeping out from their shadowy coat means the silver light of the moon gets blocked by the coat which makes it shadowy here the speaker describes the white breast of doves which are visible from the shadows of their shelter shelter here means coat in the moonlight the feathers of the doves appear to be silver the doves are also asleep students here silver feather slip refers to the doves slipping in a mattress filled with silver feathers and also hints a pure simple uninterrupted sleep sixth couplet in this we are going to learn something about equal opportunity for all in silver yes students the speaker then observes a harvest mouse the mouse goes scampering by scampering means very hurriedly excitedly and of course this harvest mouse this rodent possesses silver claws and silver eyes the speaker does not fail to note that even rodents are captured by the silvering of the moon the silvering of the moon offers equal opportunity no one is left out no one is escaped from it even the tiny harvest mouse whose claws and eyes were looking silverish by the reflection of the silver rays of the moon at night seventh couplet 
and moveless fish in the water gleam by silver reeds in a silver stream. Students, this line represents that the silvering of a fish in a silver stream. Have you ever seen this sight? So, here the poet Walter de Lamar expresses his love for the nature and he observes the beautiful moveless fish. Now, how could the fish be moveless? Yes, students, in this final lines of the poem, the speaker <coughs> evokes a feeling of peace and movement that encourages a reader to imagine the silvering of fish in streams in the moonlight. The fish, in fact, take their existence among the reeds as they swim through the waters with the goal of continued existence. The poet called fish moveless in the poem because fish can't move in gleamy water, suggesting that they too are sleeping. The moonlight makes the stream and also the reeds along the bank appears silver too. So students, here I have completed the explanation of the couplets. So now here as we have discussed the poem, then the question arises that yes, what is this poem about or what is the mood of the poem? Dear students, the mood of the poem Silver is calm and peaceful. As the poet Walter de Lamar describes the night of moon falling over on earth, from above, making everything seem silver. The speaker has marvelously captured the wonderful silvering of things as they appear in the night time, blessed with moonlight upon them. As the moon has walked the night, she has invited those who have also observed such a scene to remember not the absence of the golden light, that is the sunlight, but the intense presence of the silver. Yes, night with big moon paints beauty as it silvers each object and enhances its stillness in loveliness. So students, we have completed the explanation of the poem and now again we will switch back to the poem for its poetic devices. And after the poetic devices, we will also deal with the warming up activity. So first we'll discuss the figures of speech line by line, couplet wise and then something about the poem. <coughs> Excuse me. Lines on your screen and here we start with the question 
name and explain the figures of speech students when this question is in the exam you have to name the figure first and then you have to explain it means you have to elaborate the meaning of that sentence that defines that particular figure of speech so here we go with it let's start analyzing it first line first couplet slowly silently now the moon walks the night in her silver shoon in this couplet in all there are three figures that is alliteration personification and inversion why alliteration students please mark the words the words slowly and silently with their initial sound s gives the pleasing effect to the poetic expression so it is alliteration next it is personification now the moon walks the night in this line the moon has been personified as if a moon walking slowly and quietly in the night wearing silver shoes next it is inversion the words in this line is framed in poetic language therefore the correct prose form is in the night of the moon walk slowly and silently in her silver shoon i repeat the correct prose order in the night the moon walks slowly and silently in her silver shoon students in the same line please take note of slowly and silently it is also a consonance consonance this concept may be new to you but in figures of speech please take note we do have this two figures assonance and consonance as i said slowly and silently is also consonance why it is consonance because it represents delicate addition to the poem students consonance is a figure of speech in which the same consonant sound repeats within a group of words students in the first couplet the speaker lays out a peaceful scene and also walking the night in silver shoon gives the poem an elegant and graceful touch better we take this lines for better understanding as we have it now second couplet yes this way and that she peers and sees silver fruit upon the silver trees in this there are two figures number 1 personification number 2 repetition and there is also presence of assonance now why it is personification the moon is given the human quality of peering this way and that next repetition the word silver silvery occurs in every second line of every couplet take note it shows a pattern of repetition for pleasing effect and here and is also repeated even there is a presence of assonance why why assonance see the words peers and sees students it is assonance because assonance is a figure of speech in which the same vowel sound repeats within a given group of words 
It represents delicate addition to the poem. Therefore, students, repeated sound S and the commas in between. Yes, please see here. These are the commas, commas and semicolons. Yes, commas and semicolons as you could see. So, when you have such commas and semicolon, uh, semicolon uh, commas or semicolons, here the repeated sound S and the commas in between slows the reader's mind to the tempo of the poem. Silver fruit upon silver trees describes perfection in the scene. So students, next third couplet, one by one the casement catch, here beams beneath the silvery thatch. I repeat, one by one the casement catch, her beams beneath the silvery thatch. Again, in the second line, there is word silvery. In every second line of each couplet, you will find there is the presence of the word silver, which adds glory to the poem. So, students, in this line, there are in all two figures of speech, alliteration and repetition and personification as well. Why alliteration? Because the initial sound of the words casement and catch, that is the sound k, and the initial sound of the words beams beneath, that is sound b, offers a pleasing rhythm to the poem. It is also repetition. The word one, one by one, so the word one is repeated for the pleasing effect. Then student pay attention to casement catch. Don't you find the presence of personification there? Yes. Here the moon is qualified of catching. Catching the casements. So here moon is personified as catching the casements. So it is personification. Next. Fourth couplet, couched in his kennel like a log with boughs of silver slips the dog. Here students, we have two figures. Number one, simile and number two, metaphor. Why simile? Students, metaphor is indirect comparison whereas simile is the direct comparison. So, let us discuss the simile in this couplet. Here, the log of wood is directly compared to a sleeping dog. Peacefully, in perfect harmony, which appears like a lifeless wooden log. Therefore, students, as simile, a figure of speech is involving the direct comparison of one thing with another thing of a different kind used to make a description more emphatic or vivid. Therefore, students, a slipping dog is compared to a lifeless log. So, this is a very direct comparison of different things. Therefore, it is simile. Next, as I said, it is metaphor. Yes, with silver powers of silver. With powers of silver is a metaphor. Mark the lines. 
mark the words with pause of silver is a metaphor in that comparison here silver and pause both are indirectly compared to the uninterrupted sleep of dog therefore it is metaphor next let's move on to the fifth couplet in this line fifth couplet from their shadowy court the white breast pick of doves in feathered slip so i repeat from their shadowy court the white breast pick of doves in silver feathered slip students here there are two figures one is inversion and the other one is metaphor why inversion the words are not in correct prose order the correct prose order is the white breast of doves peep from their shadowy coat and slip in silver feathered that is shelter students please take note i repeat this line again the correct prose order is the white breast of doves peep from their shadowy coat and slip in silver feathered so it is inversion next as i said it is also metaphor why metaphor check out the words silver feathered slip both silver and feather hint a pure simple and uninterrupted slip so there is indirect comparison between silver light and feathered slip as it represents a pure simple and uninterrupted slip of the doves next couplet a harvest mouse go scampering by with silver claws and silver eye students here i could see yes there is only one figure of speech and that is synecdoche synecdoche students please take note here the poet increases the detail of the poem from casement to the eyes of a mouse right from the line of the casement the poet has come to the eyes of a mouse turning more and more things to silver so it is synecdoche i give you the spelling of synecdoche s y n e d o c h e it is synecdoche students take note eye of silver claws and silver eyes represent the mouse that goes on scampering i repeat the silver claws and silver eyes represents the mouse that goes on scampering it's not only the claws and eyes that goes on scampering but the entire mouse that goes on scampering therefore it is synecdoche synecdoche is a figure of speech in which a word or phrase that refers to a part of something is substituted to stand in for the whole or vice versa next couplet number 7 and moveless fish in the water gleam by silver reeds in a silver stream students here i could see something what what exactly i could see the word gleam gleam means a shine with a bright reflection of light yes i also see the word reeds reeds are tall grass which grows in groups near water bodies so students in the last couplet the poet leaves the reader satisfied leaving every detail silver and completing the duty with two adapters who are these two adapters 
Number one, moving fish in the water gleam and reeds in a silver stream. So students here, there is no specific figure of speech but only the words of showing peace and satisfaction by the end of the poem. Overall students, in short, Silver is a magnificent and meaningful poem with techniques used to create imagery in the poem which follows a rhyming pattern of I want you to pay attention to the rhyming pattern. So quickly let us move on to the poem. Check the rhyming words. A A B B C C D D E E F F G G. Yes. And students, please take note. In its first four lines, the poem contains eight syllables, but others stretch to nine or eleven. Uh, or I could say that yes, the first four lines contain eight syllables, check out, but others stretch to nine or even ten syllables. Okay, so here we complete with the poem and now quickly. Just come to the page of warming up activities. Students, this activity on your screen, but as we are not in contact, as we are not in the class to form the groups as such, here just it is about forming the group. Okay? And you have to name the group and the categories and the names are given. For example, see in the question, Imagine that your class has to be divided into groups or houses. Each house will have their own color, symbol, emblem, motto, dress code, a common room with objects of their interest and suitable furniture. So this is what the instruction given by the teacher. Think of the sets of four names for the groups. So students, when you are forming the groups, you are naming it. So form groups and work out the imagery, imaginary details for each set. Some suggestions are name. If you are taking the title of your group as name, so the color would be yellow, symbol would be sun, motto would be health is wealth and dress code would be yellow vest belt etc. Okay and if you want to show the room of your group, you can say that it is of having cane furniture, green and yellow curtains and herbariums in the common room. So students, two columns on your screen in the given table. One is the category and the other are the names. So students, in category, metals and the names are steel, copper, silver, gold. Next, Category flower and the names are rose, lotus, lily, marigold. You can name some other flowers as well. Next, stars and galaxies. So you can name them as Milky Way, Whirlpool, Triangulum, Starburst. I repeat, Milky Way, Whirlpool, Triangulum or Starburst. Next, trees. And you can name them on your screen, Neem, Banyan, Gulmore, Ashoka. Next, Seasons. You can name them Spring, Summer, Winter, Monsoon. So students, here we take a start with the next lines. Read the lines of the following poem. Guess and feel in suitable words to make the lines rhymes. So teaching you the rhyming pairs. Students, you can just take the pencil in your hand and start completing this beautiful poem. Okay? Please have pencil in your hand.
and so here we take a start golden glow students we are we need to complete this poem with good rhyming words at, at the end of each line so start soon after dawn rises the sun it wakes and enlivens every one it scares away the long dark night the shining stars go out of sight from tree to tree birds flit and fly searching for food with a sharp eye the birds that open now show their face as flowers they dance with beauty and grace the hill slope wears a grassy green cover the curved sparkling river its gold color the cock then crows to give a loud call come on wake up folks one and all i then wake up good morning to say let's all look forward to a golden day so students here we have completed with the poem golden glow as well teaching you how to pair the rhyming words okay you can have one more try for the same students please take note you also need to be a good poet so start learn uh, writing some four lined poems on your own and be a poet so on this note we complete with the poem silver i hope you all have paid proper attention to the teachings okay and you can complete the given notes in your text based on the poem silver have a nice day ahead thank you